Hello strangers and strangelings, welcome back to another episode of Strange Bar and Grill. We've all experienced the schoolyard bully growing up, you know, push you down in the sand, take your lunch, or maybe it was the big kid that lived around the corner, the Debo's, that would beat up the smaller kids and take their bikes and just take things that wasn't his. And if you don't remember that kid, you were either lucky not to experience it, or you probably owe somebody an apology. Me personally, I was never bullied. Well, people would try it and they quickly regretted it. Because although I was quiet, you know, I loved to draw, comic book characters, got good grades, bullies learned the hard way. I liked to fight and people began leaving me and my friends alone. Today, I'll be telling you a story about a bully, a jerk, a degenerate, basically a piece of trash and a town that had enough of his terror and finally fought back. But first things first, if you like strange true crime and mysterious storytelling, then this is the place to be here with me, JP. So kick back, grab a drink and a snack and make sure to tip that like button. Join that SBG family by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Because remember, I do release one to two times weekly. All right, let's go. In 1949, 15-year-old asshole Ken Rex McElroy dropped out of school in the 8th grade and moved to a tiny farming town called Skidmore, Missouri. He quickly established a local reputation as a cattle rustler, small-time thief, and a womanizer. At night, he would drive his truck onto Skidmore residents' property and he would steal their livestock, their alcohol, grain, their food and antiques. Just basically anything he can get his dirty hands on. If he could sell it, he stole it. And if the owners ever caught him in the act, he would just raise his gun at them and tell them to take their sorry asses back inside and never report it to the police or he would put a bullet in their head. Did I mention that Rex was a big 265 pound Shrek looking son of a bitch who was known for having a bad temper and for being really over the top aggressive? People generally just said screw this and did what he asked. They just did not want trouble from this guy. And for the most part his crimes went unreported. The rare times that victims would report Rex's crimes to the police, Rex would begin his intimidation tactics against them and their families by following them around town, parking outside their houses, and just being a freaking creep. He would even just walk directly up to these victims and he would say, hey, I will kill you if you testify against me. He was a freaking nut, just insane. But what if those intimidation tactics didn't work? Rex would use some of his illegal money to hire one of the very best defense lawyers in the entire state. A lawyer who had famously represented the mob and he would step in and get Rex off of basically any charge. Rex actually did shoot one of the owners who caught him in the act. Could you imagine getting robbed and then shot and then the guy that shot you uses the proceeds from the goods he stole from you to hire a lawyer who gets him off each time? Now this guy is a huge piece of shit, but it gets worse. Over the years, Rex would use these fear and intimidation tactics not just to make money, but also to prey on young women and girls. In the 1970s, when Rex was 35 years old, he began stalking a local Skidmore girl who was just 12 years old and in the 8th grade. Her name was Trina. After assaulting Trina repeatedly, Rex learned her family was going to press charges against him. So Rex burned down Trina's family house and shot the family dog and then threatened to kill the entire family unless they signed paperwork that would legally marry their daughter Trina to Rex. This would protect him legally in case they pressed any charges against him. Rex's intimidation tactics worked. Trina's family begrudgingly signed off on the marriage. Trina was forced to come live with Rex and his second wife at their house. That's right, this rotten bastard was already married. He would eventually divorce Alex and then marry Trina, but within two years of Rex taking Trina, Trina became pregnant. After the birth of her child, she took her baby and tried to run away from Rex. She ran back to her family's new house and she was hiding there, but Rex tracked her down and took her and their baby 
back. Then Rex proceeded to burn her family's house down again and again killed their new family dog. This guy killed two dogs. Like how sick do you gotta be to kill a, to kill a, a, a dog? It's fucking crazy. Could you imagine you get your house burned down and your dog gets killed? You're forced to sign your daughter away to some bully and then he does it all over again. That's two times that this asshole violated. In 1973, Rex was indicted for assault and arson. He was arrested, booked, arraigned, and released on a $2,500 bail. Trina and her baby were placed in foster care at a home in Maryville, Missouri. Rex sat outside the foster home for hours at a time staring at it. He told the foster family that he would trade girl for girl to get his child back. Since he knew where the foster family's biological daughter went to school and what bus route she rode. Additional charges were filed against McElroy, but he ultimately got off scot-free because of that fancy mob lawyer. Also, on July 27th, 1976, a Skidmore farmer by the name of Romaine Henry said McElroy shot him twice with a shotgun after Romaine challenged Rex for shooting weapons on Romaine's property. Dumbass Rex was charged with assault with intent to kill. Rex denied he was at the scene and as the case dragged on without a court date, Rex would stalk Romaine and he would park outside Romaine's home. He would show up at all hours of the night, making sure Romaine could see his shotgun just pointed at him. He must have done this at least a hundred times, according to Romaine. At the trial, Rex convinced two raccoon hunters to testify that they were with Rex the day of the shooting and were nowhere near Romaine's property. Of course, Rex was acquitted. Rex was always acquitted. Everyone knew he was trouble and he always got away with it. I don't know this for a fact, but Rex had to be one of the most hated men in Skidmore, and he was a cancer to the small town. He had hurt so many people in town, but it seemed like no one could do anything about it. It was like he was untouchable, like the mob, until a single piece of candy changed everything in 1980. One of Rex's children was at a local grocery store in Skidmore when they were caught stealing a piece of candy. When the store clerk asked the children to put the candy back, they refused because they were also assholes like their father Rex. And they basically told the clerk to go scratch, I'm doing what the hell I want. Of course, this caused a huge commotion, and before long, Rex had found out about it, and Rex, instead of being upset with his children for stealing, he becomes enraged that the clerk had the audacity to accuse his child of a crime, and so Rex begins stalking the owner of the store, a 70-year-old man who went by the name of Bo, along with the rest of Bo's family. Rex would just show up in front of their house with a shotgun, he had it slung over his shoulder, and he would even fire shots into the air to intimidate the family. And then during the day, he would actually walk right up to Bo in the middle of his store and he would tell him, I'm going to kill you. Bo and his family knew it was only a matter of time before this lunatic Rex did become violent and they were correct. In July of that year, Rex showed up at Bo's grocery store with a shotgun in hand, and Bo, who was in the back of the shop loading up groceries through the back door, he turns around and he sees Rex walking up to him, and the shit goes down. At some point during the confrontation, Rex just raises his shotgun and fires a shot into Bo's neck. Bo was wounded badly, but he would survive, and Rex would actually get arrested and would be charged with attempted murder, and it seemed like for once, maybe just once, Rex was actually going to be charged and convicted of attempted murder, but he didn't. The attempted murder charge was lowered to just an assault and he was given two years in prison, but he would only serve one day in jail before being released on bail pending his appeal. And as soon as he was out on bond, he went right to the D&G Tavern, which was a little local tavern in the middle of Skidmore, the only bar in Skidmore. And he carried with him his rifle that had a bayonet attached at the end of it. And basically to anyone who would listen, he began describing in very, very graphic details how he was going to finish Bo off. The details, of course, involving his rifle and his bayonet. Now this led to several patrons 
of the tavern, deciding to see what they could legally do to prevent McElroy from harming Bo or anyone else at that matter. They met with the politicians of Skidmore to discuss these threats. The politicians convinced the townspeople to give the justice system just one more chance. Just give us a chance to do right by you guys and put Bo away. But Rex's appeal hearing was of course delayed. Of course it was. He has this super fancy lawyer who can just do anything in the justice system. Now this left the townspeople feeling hopeless and angry. They're just enraged at this point. It's like, what do we do? Rex was free to terrorize the town of Skidmore a lot longer. On the morning of July 10th, 1981, just a day after the news of Rex's appeal being delayed, the townspeople of Skidmore held a secret meeting at the Legion Hall in the center of the town. They had this meeting with the sheriff and they intentionally did not include Rex. The townspeople were enraged at this point and they began discussing, you know, how are we going to handle Rex? We can't use police. Politicians aren't helping. Just nothing can be done. So what are we going to do? How are we going to put an end to this sick man's reign of terror? And after a while of tossing ideas kind of back and forth, they came up with a plan. And after the meeting was done, everybody left the town hall. They got their guns and they made their way over to the tavern where Rex and Trina were seen earlier that morning having a beer. As Rex and Trina sat down to enjoy some beers, about 40 men carrying guns flooded into the bar. They all just stared at Rex, united in their fight against this horrible, disgusting bully. And at one point, Rex kind of looks back at the angry mob, his rage kind of boiling up inside of him. He wanted to lash out and fight, but he knew he was just outnumbered. He couldn't do shit. Soon, Rex and Trina left the tavern and went to their pickup truck. He tries to act tough, of course, like it's not bothering him, but you can see the fear in his eyes. And as they left the tavern, everyone followed them out of the bar. As Rex and Trina sat in their truck, the townspeople surrounded the truck. Rex, still acting tough, yells out some curse words to the townspeople, but they're unfazed. They're tired of his shit. Rex lights up a cigarette. Well, that's not a cigarette, that's like a mirror, that's like a joint or something, I'm smoking it wrong, but however you hold a damn cigarette, I don't hold cigarettes, I don't smoke, but Rex lights up a cigarette, he turns on his truck, and as he's about to try and drive away, that's when you hear a gunshot ring out, and Rex immediately slumps forward onto the steering wheel, and then one of the Skidmore residents runs up to the truck, opens up the passenger side door, they grabbed Trina, who was sitting right next to Rex, and she was unharmed, she didn't get shot, and they pulled her out. Then they rushed her back into the tavern and back to safety, and once she was confirmed safe, the residents surrounded the truck. They all pulled out their weapons and began firing on Rex for a full 30 seconds, just unloading on his ass. And finally, when they were out of bullets, they called an ambulance and everyone just stood there and watched the town bully die. There were close to 50 witnesses that witnessed this murder or this justice, wherever you want to put it. But they all said they didn't see this shooting happen or they didn't see who shot Rex. And through a lengthy federal investigation, none of the witnesses cracked. So you have 50 people sticking to a story that they didn't see nothing, they don't know nothing. They're not snitching. They're, they are not telling on their fellow townspeople. None, none of the witnesses changed their story. And as a result, no one was ever charged with Rex's murder. Years later, when reporters came to ask about this, this strange killing, one of the residents was quoted as saying he was just a bad guy. He was a man that just needed to be killed. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. If you guys like that story, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe. And remember, I do release one to two times a week. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified when I drop these stories. But as always, be safe, be good. Don't be a bully. The town might come and get you. <laughs> be safe, be good.